So the last element of text to work with is actually going to be some imported text from Microsoft Word. And um, if you've got anything selected at the moment, do just click to the side of the artboard or go to the select menu and choose deselect. And then we'll go to the file menu and then import the text by choosing a command called place. Place really means import. So when you click on that, it takes us back to the working folder where we we're last interacting with any files. I'm going to click on there and go back up to the main folder, AI intro. And um, we've got a dedicated folder called info for things like text and images. So I'll double left click on that. And the file that we need is called detours and that's a Microsoft Word file. So I'll click on that. Do turn on the checkbox, which reads show import options. That means the options for your text that you're bringing in. Now there aren't that many for Illustrator, but there's one in particular that is quite handy. So when you click on place, it will load up this dialog box. Remove text formatting is usually turned off. But in our case, I'm going to turn on remove text formatting. I'm not going to trust what's formatted inside of Microsoft Word. I want to do all of it inside of Illustrator. And then I will click OK. Your cursor changes in appearance. But essentially where your cursor works from is the tiny little black triangle. I'm going to hover my cursor level with the left edge of the text. That's the capital D in Detours. Click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down and drag out all the way across to where the S is in Detours and then let go of the mouse. And that drops the text in. So by turning on the checkbox for remove text formatting, it takes it back to Illustrator's default, which is Myriad Pro regular, a size of 12 points. Again, what I can do is I've got my type tool active. I can triple click, so one, two, three, to select everything in that paragraph. I'll then, first of all, change the alignment to center aligned. And then I'm going to go up to the top to appearance, click in the color chip for the fill, change that to white, press return, and then I'll hit the escape key to come out of type editing mode. And if you wish to just get more characters, maybe on the third line down, you can change that. Um, you can obviously go to the handle on the, on the left hand side, hold down the alt key, and you can just pull that text frame in a little bit if you wish, just to get a, a bit more of an even distribution of text on each of the three lines inside of there. If you don't like something called hyphenation, if I just zoom in closer here, hold down the space bar to get to the hand tool. Now I need to create uh, a word that's split. There we go. So there, friends before heading. So the word heading has been split across two lines. So that's hyphenation. If you don't like that kind of thing, and many people don't, you can go to the paragraph options in the properties panel, click on the three dots for more options. And there's a checkbox for hyphenate. That will turn hyphenation off for only the selected text frame. So that's how you solve that problem. And then press return to make that pop-up disappear. I'll go to view, choose fit artboard in window. Finally align all these text frames in here. So I'm going to position my selection tool over the image window and just drag across those three text frames to select them all. And you'll notice now that in my properties panel, we have some align options. And I'm going to change the alignment mode, not to align to each of the text frames, but to align to the artboard. When I change it to that one, you'll see a little symbol of a page. And then I'll choose to horizontally align the centers. And that now makes sure that each of those text frames is perfectly aligned to the artboard, which in turn that makes them all aligned with one another. I'll click away, just click back on the biggest text frame and just use the cursor keys to tap up this time. Make sure that obviously I don't move that left or right and then click on the bottom text frame and just hold down the up cursor key on the keyboard just to make that a little bit closer and then click away. So we now have our text. Next, we need to apply a special effect to our big word in their detours, which is going to be a warp.